What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Judas and what we really found out today. Now, I, I got to give credit where credit's due here. Um, IGN, IGN, Ryan McCaffrey, and also actually Jeff Keeley is like a tag along guest. They did a hour and seventeen minute, which I think is the exact minute, um, interview with Ken Levine, and I think it's an awesome interview. I think Ryan McCaffrey is very talented and, and maybe one of the most talented people left at IGN. And Jeff Keeley, I think, also knows how to ask some really good questions. So what I kind of want to do is just go through my, you know, experience or what I heard from them that resonate with me and talk about how excited I am for this game. I honestly would would suggest if you want to know about this game, just give it a watch. He also did an interview with Skill Up. I think that's uh, an over two hour interview. I didn't watch that when I'm recording this. I'll probably watch it tonight. But Ken Levine is a genius and it's just kind of fun and interesting to me as somebody who plays games for fun and escapism, but also like I I like the behind the scenes stories. I like how things are crafted. Even I, I'm not a programmer or designer. He is a really interesting guy to listen to. And he truly, I believe, is one of the, the biggest geniuses uh, in the gaming industry. Um, in the same way as a Hideo Kojima or maybe like a Sam Lake. I think Ken Levine is up there in like the, the Mount Rushmore kind of thing. So this game sounds incredible. And it sounds like if they do what they're trying to do, it's going to change the way that some single-player games are. And actually, Jeff Keighley kept bringing this up, and eventually it's like, okay, Jeff, we get it. But he's right. If this works, a certain portion of AAA single-player games will be forever changed. You will have a new way of doing it. And what is that new way? It is the organic, I would say, flow of events. And, I mean, there's, there's more to it. They talk about these three central characters, right? And their relationship with each other and their relationship with you as Judas. And this idea that as you go through this game, the relationships organically change. There's things in this game, for example, of going after or doing a quest line for one person and another character will come in and bribe you and say, hey, maybe you want to like do stuff for me. Stop going about that character. In fact, in the interview, they even talked about how characters will try to sabotage the other characters. A character might drop an audio log that shows the character you're doing a quest for being a terrible human being. And then you say, ooh, man, all of a sudden now I don't like this character. I'm going to go with them. And everything builds on top of another. They talk about Legos, right, in the IGN interview. It honestly sounds like a more single-player oriented nemesis system a nemesis system where people will remember and they bring it up Jeff Keeley actually brings it up uh, on his own video the idea that characters will remember what you're doing but this is strung along in more of a narrative form than I think you would ever have gotten in in, in Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of War I love that concept and they said one specific thing okay in this interview that really stood out to me Games have, I believe, tried this before, some variation of it. But there's always a point in these games where you can tell the breakdown between the linear narrative storytelling, right, like the main plot, let's say, and then almost where, like, AI, and even if it's not using AI, where you feel the disconnect, where you feel like these are just kind of blocks of events that if I choose this thing, then the next thing will happen. Honestly, I mean, you think about Walking Dead, Telltale's Walking Dead, which is a, a phenomenal game, and really, uh, I mean, the importance to that of the industry is, is massive, right? But you can actually see, even though it's a phenomenal game, you know when you make X decision, then Y thing is going to happen, right? And it feels very blocky, like the game's programming is basically waiting for you to choose something to then layer on the next thing and the next thing. It's, it's kind of, uh, again, almost like a procedurally generated type thing. Nothing really wrong with that, but there is another level there kind of combining, I guess, what the Nemesis system does that we've never really gotten before. And, and that's kind of where I'm at with Judas. If it works, we've never got something like what Judas is trying to do. Judas is in The Walking Dead. You make the decision and thing, you're not going to be able to tell where the base story stops and the procedurally, okay, well, you're going to choose this thing so the next thing happens, where that starts. And they bring that up in this game. They say there's mo or there actually there are no moments, and that's the good thing. They can't tell where, like, the point-to-point -point narrative uh, main story beats are 
and the difference between that and then where these characters kind of come in and, and you're going to have to make decisions and the game is going to kind of uh, naturally change with you. They can't tell where those things stop and start. And Ken Levine says, yes, that, that's what we want. That's the whole goal. I mean, come on. That is incredible. Now, he does talk about like endings that there are actually going to be. I'm surprised. He didn't spoil things, but he does spoil, I would say, the uh, trajectory of the game. He talks about how... In the beginning, you might try to make all three of these characters try to like you. But as time goes on, you are going to have to pick one. You you can't keep... And that's smart because, again, you think about real humans, us, day-to-day thing. If you're trying to appeal to three different people that have different you know, ideologies, right? They really don't like each other, at least at times they don't like each other. You can't keep saying, well, I'm going to help you, but oh, don't, don't worry, I'm going to help you later, right? You can't keep doing that. Eventually, things are just going to clash. You're going to have to pick one. So he gives that away. He says that is going to happen. That's fine. He also says that there are going to be flat out substantially different endings based on who you choose. I don't know. And he never says three. And I think Jeff Keighley tries to make him say, you know, a number. But he doesn't give a specific number because I think he says that there was like an end decision as well, maybe with these characters that would also spin off. So it's possible you're going to get more than three endings, but you are going to get uh, more than one ending to this game. Beyond that, I mean, they talk about the gameplay. I mean, we can see some of the gameplay as well in B-roll and trailers. The gameplay looks really fun. The gameplay is the most familiar, okay? Let's not try to lie about it. The gameplay looks the most like Bioshock, probably will feel the most like Bioshock. They talk about uh, kind of additional things they add in, one with uh, yourself, what you can do, so hacking being a big part of it. But they also talk, again, about those, those three big players that – they can influence how the game is. They can shut things off if you're kind of running to a, a specific area. They can shut that down on you just because you upset them. They can take over turrets to help you. Ken Levine brings up a, a specific example where Hope, which is the the daughter of these other two characters, where Hope, if you upset her and you're trying to stealth, there'll be a, there'll be moments where she'll say, "Hey, she's uh, she's over here. Judas is over here," and it's like, "Oh my!" Now here's the thing. We hear that stuff, right? And again, those kind of things have probably been attempted before. The way Ken Levine talks about it is literally being at any time. She might say, hey, you know, Judas is over here. She can say that at the two hour and 52 minute mark in X area of the map, or she can say it at seven hour mark in Y area of the map. It's not locked to a specific area. And then one of three things is going to happen in that area. It sounds more dynamic than that, where these things are going to play out and they're going to try to balance each other. Again, maybe like another character will come in to help or hinder. That's what this game sounds like. So even from gameplay, the gameplay feels familiar and it looks familiar in how you're shooting and how you're using, you know, like a, a weapon kind of hand power, right? That looks familiar, but how the interaction with these these AI or, you know, whatever you want to call them, NPCs, how that plays in with gameplay sounds revolutionary, honestly. So that is my biggest takeaway. Like, I trust Ken Levine for the storytelling. He talks about that as well, where... They know that people want a uh, lived-in world. They want a backstory. They don't want some cookie cutter like, oh, X character's evil. That's the downfall of like the civilization. No, everything has a backstory. Why did this place fall? In this case, the Mayflower, right, which is the ship. Why did the Mayflower fall? How is it falling? What were these characters doing? What is their ambition? What's their goals? Like, why do things break down? It's not cookie cutter. And I, I have come to expect that from Ken Levine. I've come to expect that from the worlds and the characters. So a lot of that stuff has always kind of been set in stone where I think he's got that under control. The new mechanics of, again, just the flow of this game and the interaction and it changing on the fly to what you do. And it's and I maybe have said this, but maybe not. It's not AI. It's they have crafted each individual part and come up with a system to put it all together where things are going to feel natural. I mean, that's really the basic thing here, right? Is feeling natural with all of these separate kind of events that are supposed to tie together. How do you actually make it flow well? Because most games, in fact, all games have never really figured that out yet. And they claim to. They claim to have uh, been able to do it. So, again, I mean, the tagline that I'm going to really be running with for the next God knows how long. I, I think this game's a 2025 game. Even though they played five hours, it, it certainly sounds like they're holding off where the game is still not coming out anytime soon. But I guess soon is subjective. If soon to you means a year, yeah, it probably does come out next year, right? Uh, but if this works, if what he's trying to do works, and Jeff again brings it up, 
other games can do this. Like there is, and, and Ken Levine says it too. There's a system now where they can plug it in with another, their next game. They can plug in that system. Yeah, you would have to write the elements and write what happens and whatnot, but the system will kind of figure, and, and there's a lot of metrics involved where you can raise values, lower values to, to make things kind of work in the world. It sounds like they kind of cracked the code, made a system around it, and you can use that system, right? So, I mean, future of his own games they can use take two can use um but these are the kind you know when i talk about the nemesis system and how you know wb does the the trademark right where like you can't use it if you're not you know them and and more specifically even like monolith monolith seems to be the only one that's actually allowed to use it you could say that's not fair honestly make your own and i under i mean is this took him 10 years to do it's not like he made it in like a day but when, I, when I've brought up those stories before and people say, oh, you know, it sucks that the Nemesis system is locked, somebody can make their own Nemesis system and maybe make it better, maybe make it a little bit different. It sounds like Ken Levine has made the closest comparable to the Nemesis system. Sounds like he's made it, but he's maybe even made it better in a different genre of game, and he actually might make it where you can transform the single-player space if this works in future. Uh, maybe a Square Enix does this in the future, or a Sony, or whatever. That's what it sounds like this game is. So I cannot wait. I mean, honestly, it could be a generational game, which, you know, Bioshock, you can be consider that as well. He makes generational games uh, for a living. So I hope we get that with Judas. Um, I am setting my expectations quite high now, and honestly, he did it to himself, and I think that's cool because I, I hope that he reaches my expectations for this game. Let me know what you think. Make sure you're subscribed, bell icon turned on. I hope to see you all on the next one.